All right, welcome to my gaming setup. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of all the, the cool things I've done in my gaming setup. Um, this has actually been a project that's been uh, years in the making. And I finally have the gaming setup pretty much where I want it to be. So uh, I'll give you a tour of what is what I have going on. Uh, let's go with the uh, monitors first. These are four BVM monitors. Broadcast video monitors, these are uh, professional monitors that Sony used in like uh, broadcast studios, television and so on. Uh, the best possible uh, CRTs you can find. I, uh, I'm a big fan of CRTs as you can see. The left one is the 20F1, which is standard definition only. Uh, about the best one there is. Then there's two widescreen monitors, they are the same one. D24, it's a multi-format monitor, so it can do HD. You can see the left one is playing uh, Breath of the Wild, Wii U. Uh, the right one is doing uh, some 360. Then the vertical monitor uh, in the middle is a BVM D20, which is also multi-format. And it's displaying some 480p Ikaruga right here from the Dreamcast. Fantastic game. So I love these monitors. Then uh, you can see, I, for, I'm just showing it off. I'm uh, just put a probe here. This is a kind of hard to find one. Sony probe. And you can see they have uh, option inputs on the monitors. This little uh, connector there. You can just connect the probe to that and uh, calibrate the colors, calibrate the white balance, make it all perfect. So these are, are absolutely fantastic. Also, by the way, Battle Gorega, best shoot em up ever. Love this game, I played a lot. So yeah, that's, that's, that's it for the monitors. Then here, I always get a lot of questions about this from people. This is an actual matrix switcher or a cross point uh, and everything is running through this. So this is really the centerpiece of my gaming setup. I put some labels here, you can see there, uh, G-SCART, which is another SCART switcher, PS1, PS2, there's two PS2s, PS2 1 and 2, PSP, running from component video, super graphics, Dreamcast, analog anti-mini, which is a 8-bit powerhouse of uh, NES. Game Gear, Master System, and so on. Sega Mega Drive, or Sega Genesis, depending on where you live. GameCube 1 and 2, so I have two GameCubes running. A Wii, Wii U, PS3, regular Xbox, and a 360. Then the outputs are also interesting. This only has eight outputs, uh, despite being 16 buttons here, but uh, eight is enough. Four outputs go to the monitors, M1 to M4, monitor 1 to 3 and 4. RGB 1 and 2, so RGB 1 goes to my capture card, RGB 2 goes uh, to a uh, retro thing, upscaler that uh, has HDMI out, RGB 1, so uh, I can that go, let that go to my capture card or uh, to my flat screen display. To component outputs, uh, they usually only use that for my capture card for component sources. So uh, let's give a tour of the consoles that are running. Uh, some speakers, M audio, uh, monitor speakers, they are pretty good. I never had a problem with them. Good audio. So, yeah, let's have a look. As you can see here, Sega Dreamcast running uh, Ikaruga. This Dreamcast has a mode inside, the Terra Onion mode, which is an optical uh, drive emulator which uh, plays all games perfectly. I absolutely love this thing. Came out recently, and uh, yeah, it plays everything fine. Also have a backlit VMU going on there. Sega Saturn, Japanese Sega Saturn, I, I love this console. Uh, this one is modded for a region free and a 50, 60 hertz switch. I live in Europe, so most of my games are PAL. Uh, this also has a mode inside since uh, very recently. Uh, this plays all the Saturn games perfectly and I can also play the European games in their uh, 50 hertz by uh, switching that. So this one is running Battle Gorega right now. There's a dual GameCube setup. Some uh, things to say about that. Both are modded. The left one has a Wiki Fusion inside it uh, and an SD card reader. If you have an SD card in it with Swiss on it, it will automatically boot into Swiss when you turn it on. Swiss is uh, the, the software that can you can do anything with GameCube games. This still has a word to describe. Uh, so that's cool, I can still run my original discs. Uh, and if you boot into Swiss, 
uh, and I eject the SD card. You can just run the discs and you can uh, you know, force video modes. Uh, being in Europe, most of our games are PAL, so they don't do 480p. But with Swiss, you can force that, so they all run fine. Or you can play the games directly from the SD card because it's full speed, connected to the, the drive. Game Boy Player uh, with the GBA flash card, that's usually how I play my GBA games. It has a broadband adapter with also a cross, crossover cable connected to a broadband adapter from the other GameCube. So this links GameCubes together and also have a link cable for the Game Boy players. So you, if you have like two uh, Game Boy F drives, I can use two of the BVMs to uh, play some multiplayer and each person gets their own screen. So that's really a luxury, but that's really cool. This one is modded with a GameCube loader. Let's see if we can show that a little bit. So there's an SD card inside it with uh, all the best games that I want to play. And this boots automatically into Swiss as well. Uh, but this doesn't read discs anymore, but it plays all the games perfectly. So what more do you want? So uh, there's only three games that support the, the, the link via the crossover cable, Double Dash, 1080 Snowboarding and Kirby's Air Ride. And uh, I've done a couple of uh, Double Dash LAN sessions like this. So that's pretty cool. Down here, the Wii. This is one of the models that support GameCube. Let's see if it can focus, all right. Uh, this one is modded with uh, the Wii Dual. The Wii Dual is an HDMI mod. It also improves the component video a little bit because if you compare it directly from the GameCube, then uh, there's the GameCube is slightly sharper. So both of these GameCubes have uh, the component video cable from Nintendo uh, running. Every console is either a component or RGB in my setup. So this HDMI is pretty cool. If you play, if you played Mario Party on a big flat screen, that's why I would use the HDMI. But in this setup, uh, I use component, and it looks great. Five terabyte drive. It's soft modded, of course. And this five terabyte drive. Yeah, there we go. We have some focus. This five terabyte drive has the full Wii library and a GameCube library. Then here we go with. Uh, Sega Mega Drive, the European version. This has been a uh, region modded, so it's region free, 50, 60 hertz switch. And it has a triple bypass mod inside it, which bypasses the video encoder and the audio encoder. So you get absolutely pristine video and audio out of it. So it's fantastic. Uh, Mega SD, Terra Onion flash card, displays the, the whole Mega Drive library, as well as the Mega CD or Sega CD library. So that's, I love that. Recently played Snatcher on this, absolutely fantastic game, I love it, recommend it. Uh, here we go, Xbox 360, this is running right now, this is modded with a uh, Aurora dashboard. It has a 6 terabyte hard drive inside it, so it actually takes a few minutes for that to boot up. But uh, yeah, you can easily go back to the Aurora dashboard when you play a game and once it's boot up, it's all good. Love this game. I've been recently playing the Dark Souls games on this. Uh, really my type of game. I love it. Here we go. Regular Xbox. This uh, I have to, had this console for years. This has a two terabyte drive inside it, uh, with all the games you would ever want to play. Some emulators, some old uh, SD quality movies from back in the 2000s, like the early 2000s. So uh, good stuff. Also hooked up via components. Here we go, Super Nintendo. Um, this is a PAL Super Nintendo. This is a one-chip model. Uh, depending on the motherboard revision, there are different models. The one-chip model has the sharpest video output. It has a full uh, video mod as well. So it, uh, uh, RGB bypass. So it's perfect pristine video. It also has a region mod, of course. And this is a recent one with a dual frequency oscillator. So if I switch this to 60 Hz for the NTSC games, which is usually what I play, then the, the Hertz frequency is exactly identical to a, a stock NTSC uh, North American or Japanese Super Nintendo. So it's perfect for both PAL and NTSC. SD2 SNES running there. This is an early model. I modeled it with an audio board. So uh, the MSU1 CD audio games running from this uh, flash card have uh, good volume. Here we go. N64. N64 is modded with RGB as well. 
uh, this is a theme wording tone board inside it. Uh, deblur option, so you can uh, deblur some games. EverDrive. I have a full list of the US games that have been patched for an uh, anti aliasing mod to turn that off. And it clears up a lot of the blurring. And on a BVM monitor like this, a CRT, it looks fantastic. On a flat screen, it looks maybe a bit pixelated for some games, but on the BVM, it looks way better than stock, in my opinion. Clears up a lot of the blurring. Also, my N64 controllers, all of them have uh, great analog sticks. And you can keep them in great condition uh, if you uh, grease some of the, the inner parts of the, of the stick mechanism. So I've been doing that for 15 plus years. I have like five or six of these controllers that are uh, pristine and they play perfectly. Never have a problem with it. Here we go with my uh, Neo Geo, consoleized MVS. And I uh, got this one uh, a few days ago. So I've been enjoying that for the uh, past few days. The Neo Geo uh, MVS SD Pro flashcard that plays all the Neo Geo games on the MVS including some Neo Geo CD games that it supports, so that's really cool. This is RGB out as well. Uh, I have, I'm using a Saturn adapter. This particular adapter made by uh, Artrimus. You can program the buttons. And I'm using this Saturn arcade stick. This is a virtual stick, as you can see from uh, the screws. If I can get it over here. Uh, the stick has been replaced. Uh, this is all Senwa parts now. Senwa JLF, perfect joystick, and the, but the Senwa buttons. Because the, I didn't really like the stock buttons, especially not the stick. This is one of the models with an ASCII stick in it. And they're not so good, so this JLF is perfect. So this is my, uh, my go-to uh, arcade stick. All right, now we have some stuff here. PS1, one of my favorite systems. This one's modded with a PSIO, so that's the in the serial port. Uh, you can move as an uh, optical drive emulator. Uh, you can still use the regular discs, uh, but uh, yeah, I've been using this for years. Um, and recently, I think the firmware has gotten so good that there's pretty much no problem with any of uh, compatibility issues, in my opinion if you use the clean dumps for the games. Pocket Station. I've actually used this for one game now for a Final Fantasy VIII. It's even the US version supports it, despite this uh, memory card only being released in Japan. But that's really cool. It has some mini games you can play and transfer save data back and forth. Two PS2s. They both have a one terabyte drive in it, and the memory cards uh, are so it boots directly to uh, OPL, which is a software that uh, lets you uh, boot games from a hard drive. So two one terabyte hard drives, I have about 300 to 350 games each. All the games I would ever want to play, all the shoot 'em ups and so on. So uh, yeah, I love these systems. There's a bunch of uh, biohazard memory cards. Here we go. Super Graphics, I've always wanted this system. I have it since uh, about two years. This is a really cool system, especially with the Terra Onion uh, SD uh, System 2. So you can play all the PC Engine Super Graphics and PC Engine CD games on this perfectly. And it also gives you RGB out. So what more do you want? It's perfect. And uh, yeah, there are some two button and six button games. So the Hori Fighting Commander is my uh, go-to controller uh, right now, uh, I think it's great. All right, some more stuff to show to get up. Here's the Analog Anti Mini. This is the first model. I know they did a recent run for the Anti Mini Noir, which has not been released yet. Uh, didn't manage to get an order on that. They were uh, sold out immediately, but I'm lucky to have this one. Uh, it's just basically the 8 bit powerhouse. It's made it for an NES. Uh, perfect RGB video out, HDMI out if you want that. Uh, I have the uh, Famicom Disk System RAM adapter in it with an FDS stick. This is a USB stick. Button you can change disk side, side A or side B. And it has a full library on it. 
like so this plays Game Gear, Master System, NES, like whatever you want. Some really obscure stuff like the Game King and the Game Mate. Had some fun with that, but uh, you're not gonna sit for hours playing that. Here we go, Wii U. This one's also been fully soft modded with a two terabyte hard drive. So this is, has the full US library on it. Uh, and yeah, I'm not a huge fan of most of the games, but it has some absolute gems. Super Mario 3D World I played recently, and uh, of course Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild might be in my top five best games I've ever played. Seriously, it's so good. All right. Uh, here we have a PSP. This PSP is in a dock. This dock was really hard to find, by the way. So this is dock that can do a component out, and if you hook this up with a PSP Go, this model, with component out, you can display it on a, on a BVM, and you can sync PS3 controllers to this, so you can really use it as a console, or you can just take it out of the dock like a Switch, pretty much, and display it in handheld mode. This has, uh, of course, also been soft modded, 128 gig card inside, with all the best games, and you can very easily swap them out uh, if you connect it to a PC. So I think I'm a big fan of this system too. Uh, here we go with one last console, it's a PS3. PS3 Slim is better than uh, the first ver version because they are much more reliable. It's been uh, fully modded as well, two terabyte drive with a selection of uh, my favorite games for it. Uh, and the blue hard drive has the US PS1 library, which you can also play on the PS3. That's from years ago, because nowadays I just play them from the PSIO. And for some reason, uh, PS1 games on the PS3 are slightly blurrier than they would be on the PS1. And I'm kind of uh, picky about video quality. So there you go. This switch is right here. It's just for power. So uh, uh, if it focuses, so the labels, Monitor 1, Extron Switcher, Monitor 4, Xbox, GameCube, Dreamcast, Mega Drive, 360 Saturn. So I can just give power to whatever I want and I don't have to turn them all on. So I don't draw too much power at once. And with a big setup like this, I think it's an important consideration. So that's why I have all these uh, power switches. So that's pretty much an overview. There's a bunch of arcade sticks on top. The Namco, I'm pretty a big fan of the Namco. I have two of these. Uh, there's a Wii stick for uh, Tetsunobu versus Capcom. Yeah, some uh, spare stuff. My controllers, I keep in these uh, IKEA plastic crates. So yeah, I have two of these big crates like this, full of controllers, multi-taps, light guns, uh, even adapters like uh, Tech is a Hong Kong based company that makes adapters for uh, connecting uh, PS1 controllers to every other console. So yeah, if I... Uh, there you go. Sorry about that. So here yeah, you go, this is another crate like full of controllers, Wii controllers, light guns. This blue one I used recently for, uh, to play Snatcher on the Mega Drive. Konami Justifier, really cool. Some weird controllers, like look at this one. It's, this one, uh, this racing controller for Ridge Racer 4. But yeah, so uh, tons of the controllers. Easy to access right next to the, to the gaming setup. And these are just now cables, cables, cables. This whole top crate is full of video cables I'm not even using anymore. Uh, and the bottom crate is for anything else, mostly power supplies. Video game books, strategy guides. Here we have some lunar strategy guide on top, like. Lunar 1, like a lot of them. Ah, I love this one too. One of the earliest ones you can find, Dragon Warrior 4. Love that game. All right, a few more things to show. Uh, when I stream, I usually use this blue Yeti mic, USB mic. I actually have a camera that I show you. Uh, on top of this monitor right here, it's a webcam. So when I stream games, that's uh, how it's filmed. And I have some handhelds as well, let me show you. Uh, this is a PS Vita. So PS Vita is a really great system. This one has been uh, modded 
128 gig card inside, some of the best games. And it has a plug-in, so you can connect it, connect it via USB to a PC. And you can actually play in OBS, the recording software. So you can just play full screen. But it seems that if you play the full resolution, it's locked to 45 FPS, which is fine for like 90% of the game library. But something really fast, like Wipeout, which I love, uh, it can be a little bit choppy, but it's all good. You can still play on the system at the same time. A lot of games are touchscreen controls, so that's why I like this over the PlayStation TV. Because like every game that has touchscreen controls or camera controls or anything like that, you can still use all the functionality from the system. It's a regular GBA. Get some F0 E cards, card reader for uh, F0 Falcon Densetsu. Here's my uh, 3DS. This is my DS and 3DS setup. This one has been modded for. Uh, can get it out. But uh, nowadays, it's very hard to find mod for uh, with a capture card. This is the Katsu Kitty capture card. Let's turn it on. So if you look at the back of it, so you can see that there is a uh, small USB slot. Oh wow, it cannot focus on. Huh? There we go. So this small USB cable is a Katsu Kitty capture card. Um, has a flash card inside the Sky 3DS. So now it's playing Ocarina of Time 3D. If I hit the button, it will switch to the next game. And here we go. A Link Between Worlds. So that's pretty cool. So I can play all the games like this. There's also the uh, R4 card inside this thing. Well, yeah, you get the idea. This is a other flashcard for regular DS games, not 3DS. And you can actually fit the entire library of DS on this. I'm quite, quite amazed. But <laughs> it's quite crazy. But I have the entire library on this thing. They all play fine. They all save. They all work. So it's all good, right? How more portable can you get? Just one cartridge. PSP Go. Well, it's no system in it, but that's that was in the in the dock. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's an overview. Of course, I have a PC, my uh, YouTube channel. So uh, yeah, I have Steam and everything. So anything you can do, want to play, you can play. Also, for uh, if you look at the gaming setup, for multiplayer games, we usually like it's if for four-player GoldenEye, for instance, on N64. Usually, two people are on the left monitor, the, the horizontal one, and two people are on the right monitor. And uh, you can just output for the extra switcher. You can just output it to two BVMs at once. Uh, so not everybody's crammed around one monitor. So that's crazy luxury from this setup. But you can actually do that. So uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Hope it inspired some of you to, uh, for your own gaming setups. I uh, know I definitely learned a bunch about switchers and uh, monitors and so on. Watching other people's stuff. So yeah, that's it. Have a good day and uh, see you later.